Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution to question 1 with the July 2021 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below, so be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so as per usual, let's take a read of the information. So it says Anil is a debtor who owes Metro Trading 5600 as of 30th April 2021. The following information was extracted from the books of Metro Trading for the month of May 2021. So we have four transactions, but before we read through them, let's take a look and see what it is they want us to do, which is given to us right here. So use, use the form provided below to prepare Anil's accounts, Anil's account, sorry, in the books of Metro Trading for the month of May. Show the balance brought down on June 1st, 2021. So if we take a little bit of a scroll down, we will see that they've given us a T account, data Anil, and it's eight marks. So just a little rule of thumb, at least my rule of thumb, the amount of time you spend on a question should be no longer than 35 minutes. However, I aim for 30 just to have five minutes extra. So what that amounts to is about a minute and a half per mark. So you see how you have eight marks here? Eight by one and a half gives us 12. So you want to spend between 10 and 12 minutes doing this particular solution. So now we're going to scroll back up to the information and we're going to start to populate the T account. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to insert the opening balance as at the 1st of May, which is 5,600. Now, Anil is a debtor, as the question so rightly tells us, and debtors are assets, and assets have debit balances at start. So we're going to see that opening balance brought down on the debit side of 5,600. Next, on the 7th of May, sold merchandise on credit to Anil. The sales invoice is for 3,450 less 20% trade discount. Okay, so if we make a credit sale to a debtor, we are selling them goods on credit. What that means is that we are giving them the goods, but we are not getting money at the point in time of the transaction. The debtor is promising to pay us in the future, which means that the amount of money the debtor owes us is increasing. In other words, our asset is increasing, which will require a debit in the debtor's T account. Now, how much for how much should that debit be? Well, it says the sales invoice is for 3,450 less 20% trade discount. So we know with discounts, we will multiply the percentage by the value given there and then subtract that. Now, trade discount is not recorded in the books at all. It's not recorded in accounts at all. It's simply deducted on the invoice and the net amount, the amount after deducting the discount, that is the amount used for double entry. So we'll find 20% of 3450, which I think would be 690, and then subtract it from 3450, which I think will give us um, 2760 or something. And that's going to go on the debit side. Yeah, 2760. And I will say sales because the other account affected by this transaction is the sales account. All right, let's take a look at the next transaction, shall we? So on May 9th, it says Anil settled the amount outstanding from last month, April, by check after deducting a cash discount of 3%. Okay, so when they say Anil settled the amount outstanding from last month, it means he paid off what it was owed for last month, April. Now, how much is that? If we go to the T account, we could see it's 5,600. But it says after deducting a cash discount of 3%. Now, cash discounts, those are recorded. Uh, so what's going to happen here in Anil's account is we're going to have to find 3% of the 5,600, which is $618, I believe. Sorry, 168. 160. I mixed up my digits, right? 168. So we're going to subtract 168 from 5600, which I think is um, 5432. And we're going to credit Anil's account. Why are we crediting? Because Anil is a debtor. He's paying us. When, it, when a debtor pays us, the amount of the debt owed to us is going down. Like if you owed somebody $10 and you paid them back eight, you now only owe them two. So you owe them less than before. So it's decreasing the asset, which will require a credit to the asset account. So you're going to see on the credit side, it'll say 5,432, which was which is how we got our figure. That's 5,600 minus the one, um, 168. That was the 3% of 5,600 was 168. We subtracted that from 5,600 and we got 5,432. Now we have to record the discount. In this case, it's discount allowed because we are, sorry, we are allowing a discount to a debtor. And it's going on the credit side because it's going to reduce the amount the debtor has to pay. That's what discounts do. They reduce the amount that have to be paid. 
Okay, let's take a look at the next transaction, shall we? So it says, May 13th, sent a credit note for 360 to Anil for merchandise received on May 7th in a damaged condition. Okay, so on May the 7th, we sold some goods to Anil on credit. But as the question is telling us, the transaction is telling us some of those goods were damaged. So we can't rightly charge someone for, dam for sending them damaged goods. That doesn't make any sense. So what we will do is we will reduce the amount that they owe us. Hence the reason for the credit note. A credit note is a document that a seller sends to the customer to say, hey, we are crediting your account. And this is a note to tell you that we are crediting your account. Hence the name credit note. And we are crediting your account because we are going to reduce the amount you owe us. Why? Because we sent you damaged goods and we can't charge you for damaged goods. So on the credit side here, you're seeing returns in, credit note, 360. Right now, returns in, what is the account I would use um, with respect to credit notes? Because obviously, um, Anil is probably not going to keep those damaged goods and is probably going to send them back to us. So we'll have to pick it up. So that's good coming back to us. That returns in. Okay. Let's take a look at the final transaction and then balance off. So on May the 15th, it says sent a check 230 to Anil for an overpayment made in the month of March. So if we are sending a check to Anil, that means that we are making a payment out of well, our bank account because it says we sent a check. So if we are making a payment out of our bank account, bank is an asset. If we're making a payment, our asset is going down. The amount of money we have is going down, which will require a credit to the bank account. And the other account affected by the transaction will have to be debited. So what's happening here is that we're actually going to debit Anna's account. Now you might be saying, well, Chris, how come we're debiting Anna's account? If we debit Anna's account, Anna is a debtor. If you, a debt is an asset. If you debit an asset, you're increasing the asset. So does it mean that Anna owes us more money now? Well, technically, yes. Well, let me explain why. When Anna overpaid, it means he paid too much. So what that did is it reduced the debt too much. We, we, when Anil paid us, just like we have here, when he paid us with this check, we would have credited Anil's account. If you credit something for too high an amount, it means that, well, there's a mistake there and you have to fix it. If the credit is too high, you have to go on the debit side and put a counterbalancing figure there. All right. So that's the purpose of debiting Anil's account for the purpose of the refund. Now, to balance off an account, what you do is you add up the transactions on one side, debit side here, you get a total. You add up the transactions on the credit side, you get a total. They're most likely, in most cases, they're not going to be the same. So you have to find a difference. And that difference is going to be the balance carried down. Now, this side has about 8590 whereas this side doesn't even have 6000 This 5960 So therefore, this side needs, this is, this is the low, side with the lower total, this side needs the balance on that side in order to make it balance. So 2,630, and when you add up both sides, now what's going to happen? You're going to get the same figure of 8,590. And the balance carried down from the credit side is brought down on the debit side, which makes sense because Anon is a debtor, a debt is an asset, assets have debit balances. Okay, so if you have any questions on this part of the question, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If not, let's take a look at part B. Okay, so it says, in the spaces provided, state the name of the ledger in which each of the four accounts listed will be found. Okay, so you have this little table here, which I've recreated in my Excel spread here. So it says Anil, a credit customer, purchases returns, discounts allowed, and cash. And they want to know which ledger each of these T accounts will be found in. Now, a ledger is a book of accounts. So just like how you have books, hopefully, for your subjects in school, and each subject is in a separate book, I hope. I know some of you guys have um, two subjects and three subjects and four subject notebooks or binders and you have binder separators, right? So long story short, in each section, you're going to have the notes for a specific subject. It's how you classify things, how you separate them in order to find things more easily when it's time to revise. Same thing for accounts. We don't want to have to go looking through a whole list of accounts, a whole set of accounts to find one. Now, really and truly, this is kind of back in the day when you had actual physical books. Now, you probably have an electronic accounting package that you would use. And I mean, don't get me wrong, you could probably still have a folder, which you'll call, let's say, and again, you have three ledgers. Your sales ledger, your purchases ledger, and your general ledger. Your sales ledger, also called the debtor's ledger, has the accounts of all of your trade debtors. Anybody, any business to whom you have sold goods on credit, they will go in that account. So, sorry, that ledger. 
right? Now, a ledger is not an account, it's a book of accounts, a literal book or a folder on a computer. The purchaser's ledger or the creditor's ledger has the T accounts of all of your trade creditors, any entity from whom you have purchased on credit and to whom you owe money. The general ledger holds all other T accounts, assets, liabilities, expenses, revenues, and anything else. Now, really and truly, to me, that's quite a lot of accounts to hold in one ledger. So I honestly, <laughs> I would have a, a an asset ledger, maybe a non-current asset ledger and a current asset ledger. Same thing for liabilities. I might have revenues, expenses in separate ledgers and an other ledger for stuff like the capital accounts, drawings accounts and whatever else. But again, that's just me. For the purpose of your syllabus, they don't want you all doing that. They want the sales ledger, the purchases ledger and the general ledger. Okay. Now, Anil, a credit customer, is a debtor. Debtors are found in the sales ledger. Purchases returns is neither a debtor's account nor a creditor's account. It is actually a contra revenue, sorry, contra expense, right? It, it decreases the expense of purchases and as such, it's found in the general ledger. Discounts allowed is an expense account that's also found in the general ledger. Cash is an asset and that's found in the general ledger as well. And that's it for part B. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. On to part C. Okay, so for part C, they want us to take the information in this table and make a trial balance. Now, they call it an adjusted trial balance, and I don't agree with them calling it that, because an adjusted trial balance is a trial balance that is done after you make adjustments such as accruals, prepayments, provision for bad debts, provision for depreciation, and anything along those lines. So, in my solution, I call this an amended trial balance, which I believe is the better name for it. Again, just my opinion. Now, let's take a read of the question. They say that the bookkeeper extracted the following list of balances from Metro Trading's ledger on 31st of May 2021. Okay, so we have a whole list of items which we will go through and populate as we go along. The following information, additional information, sorry, is available. So it says that the total of 5,900 in the discounts allowed column in the cash book had been credited to the discount received account in the ledger. Ooh, that's a mistake. Discounts allowed is an expense and discount received is a revenue. So if you take the expense figure and put it in your revenue account, two things ha are happening here. One, and they said it was credited to the discount received account. So they put it on the side to record it as if it was discount received. So your discount received is too high and then you totally omitted your discount allowed. So you got to fix that. Okay. And the other thing we have here, it says purchases of 4,000 made on 31st May 2021 had not been posted to the purchases account. So what that means is that in your purchases journal, you have a figure of 4,000 and it was not sent or posted to your purchases T account. Hence, the figure in the income statement will be too low as well. So what we need to do is we need to put that 4,000 in the purchases figure in this list of balances here. All right, so let's start populating our trial balance, shall we? Okay, so our first item is sales. Now sales is a revenue and revenues have credit balances. So you see sales, 565, 870. Of course, I almost forgot, please don't forget to head up your statement if they have not headed it up for you. Taking a look through some of these papers, I realized that they've headed up some things for you which I think is a bit lazy on their part, or maybe a bit proactive, I don't know. Again, let's not argue about that right now. Anyhow, moving on. So we have inventory. Now inventory as well as, sorry, inventory is an asset, right? Assets have debit balances. So we're gonna see that item here. Purchases is an expense. It's money you spend on purchasing goods. It's an expense. And expenses like assets also have debit balances. Now, we are seeing 230 and you're seeing a 230 plus 4. And that was what I was talking about just now. This little note down on, sorry, on this side here. Purchases of 4,000 had not been posted to the purchases account. It was omitted, which means we left it out. To fix that, we have to put it in or add it to the 230, which as you can see, that's what I did here. All right, so moving on, we have sales returns. Now, sales returns or returns inwards is an anti-revenue or contra-revenue it decreases revenue. If revenues have credit balances, decreases to revenues have debit balances. Trade receivables, the last also known as debtors, which is an asset. And as we know, assets have debit balances. Similarly, oops, sorry, carriage inwards, that's an expense. And expenses, as we said before, have debit balances. 
Now, non-current assets. Now, I mean, we don't even need to read the rest. It just says assets. I mean, no assets go. Sorry, assets have debit balances as well. Discount receive. Right. So this is where we have some adjustments to do. So discount receive eighty five hundred, and they told us that the total of five nine in the discounts allowed column had been put into discount received. So this eighty five hundred contains a five thousand nine hundred figure that should not be there. Now, discount received is a revenue. Revenues have credit balances. But the figure we're going to put will be 2600 I believe, because it'll be 8500 minus the 5009 Why? Because the 5009 was the discounts allowed, which we mistakenly put into the discount received account. So again, the 8500 was the wrong figure. It was too high. We need to decrease it. Hence, we subtract the 5900 And then the 5900 becomes the discount allowed figure. Because if you look through the rest of this table, there was no discount allowed figure, which means that because we put the 5,009 in the discount received account, we didn't put anything, anything at all in the discount allowed account. So now that we fixed the error in discount received, we have to go and put it inside the discount allowed account. Okay, now what do we have after that? We have trade payables. Payables, also known as creditors, is a liability. Liabilities have credit balances. Speaking of which, these next two items, bank overdraft and 7% bank loan, are also both liabilities. And as I just said, liabilities have credit balances. Drawings. Now, drawings, the classification for drawings is a reduction in capital. Capital has a credit balance. A reduction to capital will therefore have a debit balance. Capital itself, as we could see here now, will have a credit balance. Right? We also have miscellaneous expense. Now, expenses have debit balances. And the last item I'm seeing here is purchases returns, also known as returns outwards. That's where that, that's classified as a contra expense. It reduces the expense of purchases. And as such, if, if purchases is an expense and has a debit balance, a contra expense which reduces an expense will have a credit balance. And if we add up both sides, guess what? We get the same figure. The trial balance agrees. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the July 2021 PUA paper two. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where I have some free PUA handouts for you. Anyway, guys, that's about it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.